A key part of all civil engineering design is to manage the water around the structure. Roads are no different. Drainage is an important element in designing durable roads. Geosynthetic pipes are used in subsurface drainage which is aimed at getting the water out of the road formation. A traditional French drain will use a round plastic drainage pipe surrounded by gravel. The trench can be quite wide and a non-woven geotextile is used to wrap the trench. Geosynthetic panel drains can also be used as road edge drains. They do not need such a wide trench and can use a sand backfill. A narrower trench requires less backfill and sand is less expensive than gravel. When designing roads, engineers must consider many factors including soil characteristics, weather conditions, rainfall patterns, topography, user requirements, traffic load, etc. Geosynthetic products provide engineers with options. Their many functions are often required in road projects. Local road authorities, example New South Wales RTA, Queensland Main Roads, Transit New Zealand, etc., have set down design requirements that include the use of geosynthetics. From road formations, we now look at embankment structures. Embankments are frequently used in highway projects to support consistent and safe road alignment. Embankments built on weak soils will require reinforcement at the base to control settlement. Embankments are a large mass of earth constructed on the subgrade. The subgrade must be strong enough to support the load imposed by the embankment. Where the existing subgrade is too soft, the embankment will settle. This is often unacceptable to design requirements. A geosynthetic reinforcement layer at the base of the embankment can reduce settlement to within design tolerance. Here you see an embankment being used to align the road. Think about how much dead load is being applied to the underlying soil. In this instance, the soil will not even take the weight of a person. How can it take the weight of a whole embankment? You can see the geotextile is a very simple yet effective reinforcing element. For large embankments, a high strength geotextile is required. The geotextile in this picture is being laid to support a high embankment and has a strength of 800 kilo newtons. Geotextile rolls may need to be overlapped. It is important that no weaknesses are introduced due to gaps between rolls or insufficient overlap. Having installed the geotextile, one can then build the embankment on top. Settlement of embankments in bridge systems are particularly important. In these cases, different settlement rates must be considered. Relating to the embankment itself and of the bridge, in addition, bridges are often constructed where the subgrade is soft, riverbeds, etc. Geosynthetic reinforcement allows the designer to control differential settlement by strengthening the subgrade. Embankments are rarely created for their own purpose. They are generally used as a part of transport infrastructure projects. Roads and railways typically use embankments with overpasses and in undulating terrain. Port facilities use embankments as bund walls to reclaim land and increase the size of port facilities. Now let us turn our attention to waste containment structures. Greater environmental awareness, community concerns and regulation have made traditional waste disposal approaches insufficient. Landfills and other waste containment structures, such as tailings dams on mine sites, can be complex and are increasingly subject to environmental regulations. 
Containment and drainage are the primary functions of geosynthetics in these structures. Geomembranes, geosynthetic clay liners and drainage products are widely used. Here is a typical cross-section of a modern landfill. You can see various layers of geosynthetics as well as leachate and gas collection elements. These products provide designers with many more options in terms of the size and location of landfill cells. Without geosynthetics, a safe landfill can only be created where the existing clay environment supports it. Waste containment structures are made up of a base and side slopes, which must prevent leakage into the surrounding groundwater, a cap, which must reduce ingress of water into the containment, control escape of landfill gas, and be able to accommodate waste settlement. Each of these elements has its own containment and drainage requirements. Geosynthetics are used in waste containment as they perform functions other materials cannot and they provide an alternative when clay, a natural containment material, is not available or is of low quality. Landfills are generally quite large structures. The geosynthetic containment layers usually have a soil cover layer. All geomembrane rolls have to be welded together to form an integral liner and dramatically reduce leakage rates. Geosynthetic clay liners are rolled out overlapping adjacent rolls. The engineer must carefully design the installation sequence to minimize the chance of damage to the products during installation. Earth moving equipment is required for safe handling. Geomembranes and geosynthetic clay liner rolls are very heavy. The side of a landfill can be quite steep. Geosynthetics must be rolled out down the slope in a controlled manner. Geotextiles are used to protect the geomembrane. They prevent penetration from drainage gravel material during construction. There are two main types of geosynthetic barrier for containment, geomembranes and geosynthetic clay liners. They are rarely used as standalone barriers, except in capping systems. Usually, they are employed as a part of a composite lining system in conjunction with a low permeability mineral layer, example compacted clay. Geosynthetic lining systems ensure that hazardous liquids or leachates do not leak into the surrounding soil and groundwater. However, liquid buildup within the system still needs to be relieved. Geosynthetic drainage systems ensure that liquids are dispersed in a controlled manner. Hazardous substances and leachates are run off into treatment systems. Geosynthetic products are a critical yet hidden component of many retaining walls. Retaining walls that make use of geosynthetics can be built in quite confined spaces and withstand very heavy loads. Geosynthetics offer designer flexibility when dealing with reinforcement and drainage challenges in retaining walls. Traditional mass gravity retaining walls are more expensive and time consuming to build than geosynthetic reinforced soil walls. A variety of different face materials can be used in a retaining wall, including segmental blocks, precast concrete panels, and gabions. Retaining walls are used widely in road projects, such as around bridge abutments.